Okay, we are continuing with assignment five, and I've decided I'm going to use my, my creature design, and I'm going to transform it by making it freeze. So how do I show that in a storyboard sketch? Okay, so I've sketched out just on a piece of typing paper, nine squares. So they're reversed here, just because of the FaceTime app. But in those nine squares, and I want everyone to sketch your storyboard this way, even if you end up with more than nine animated frames, these first three represent the beginning. The second three represent what happens in the middle of your animation. And the last three are at the end. So we want a transformation. That's the key, which means that something changes beginning, middle to end in your animation. And then at the end, it's really great if it can kind of set to reset so that you don't have a jump cut at the end of your animation cycle. Instead, it kind of resets itself. Oh, I need to adjust so the lighting is better. All right. Here we go. So at the end, my goal is to make it so whatever this last frame is here, it's going to seamlessly flow into the first frame again. So everything gets set up in order to reset. OK, so what have I drawn so far? I've drawn my creature. Right now, he's just in a blank field. By the middle, I want him to, be, to change his pose a little bit. His head is tilted up, and he's shivering and his arms are wrapped around him, he's cold, right? We all have the experience of being very cold and uncomfortable last week with the snowstorm and power outages. So this is my catharsis from that. And then in my end, I want to have the sun come out and start thawing him out. So basically, very short story. Don't be too ambitious with your sketch. It's hard to animate, and it will be very rewarding, even if it's not the most multi-arch story. So Creature starts out fine, gets really cold and frozen, then thaws out and is fine again. That's, that's the whole story. Now, I have these other panels, right? So if I just had these three, it wouldn't even be a very good picture book. I would have creature, frozen, shivering creature, creature thawing out, right? And what that does is leave a lot of gaps in between how did this creature get to be so cold and start to be freezing in ice from the bottom up? And then how did this creature get encased in solid ice that is now starting to thaw? So I need more frames. And that's why these are called keyframes because they're essential for the storytelling. So what happens next is nothing much changes in my creature except that the weather is going to get worse. So I'll, put, I'll just indicate some clouds. And my creature might move a little bit, but that's not important to the story. What's important is that the weather starts getting a little worse and colder. And then in this next frame, I might show that it's starting to snow, just like it did here in Texas in 2021 the week after Valentine's Day. And now I might show that my creature is a little bit more concerned. And there's gonna to start to be some environmental impact around my creature, like there might be some frost at my creature's feet. And then we get to this one and by now, my creature is shivering, so I might indicate that a little bit with his arms. So he's starting to shiver. Now he's starting to shiver so much because the bottom half of him is encased in ice. And by now we have like total cloud cover. And then by the middle, we're pretty much going to have the creature all but the little tip of his bill so that he can still breathe, is poking out. That little black bill is angled up and pointing out, and he is a solid block of ice. And everything around is just still and cold. It's like a wasteland. And then that doesn't really change for the creature, 
but the environment starts to change. The clouds will start to part and the sun will start to come back in. You really have to do your thinking of this through sketching, like understanding what kind of things need to change. And this will really help you. This is your, this is your plan. So then when we get to the end, my creature is starting to be revealed. This is going to get, you know, wet and puddly underneath. We'll see that the, the ice is starting to sweat down. The environment's starting to brighten up a little bit. The clouds are completely receding now. That continues here. My creature is almost fully freed from the ice. Their feet are still in the ice like this, but my creature is no longer shivering. Instead, it's basking in the sun. But the sun might start to like go out of frame again because I don't have it in the first frame. And I can think more deeply about that as I set up the assets, like what the arc of the sun will be. So just a little bit of ice. And, and you can always, you have space around your sketch. You should always leave gutters around your storyboard sketch. And they should always be squares, so you don't have to worry about composition. We're going to do these as squares, so you want to tell your story within a square. Think of it for Instagram, right? And like the Evan example I showed you in the last video. So in my last one, how do I set it to reset? Well, the sun is going to be just barely going out of frame. And my creature is going to be settling back into that original position. So it's not that these are the exact same frame, but this one sets up to go back to the original frame really clearly. All right. Now, why do you have the gutter space? Well, because sometimes you'll want to make little notes to yourself. Like this is solid ice. And in traditional um, storyboarding, you're trying to communicate a story. So you'll often use uh, some storytelling terms like introduction. So in my first panel, what do you see when the animation starts? I am introducing the character. I usually call them on storyboards like character X. So INT character X, that means introduction character X. But I am also introducing the setting, and that's called an establishing shot, shot, an EST. So I have to figure out what the setting would be, and I can make it anything. You know, I could find a background. I could even just leave it blank white, but I still have to acknowledge that that's a setting for my character. So if I make it blank white, and then I have clouds start to appear, even if they're really cartoony clouds, that turns my blank white into outdoors. Uh, what I'll probably do is use assignment one, my landscape from assignment one, so I can show you how I composite a creature into that landscape and show you all the, the steps to animating and changing it. All right, so this is my storyboard sketch. What do I do now? Well, I can just hold it up this is just like our other sketches. It doesn't need to be high resolution. And I'm going to do a screen grab of it. So on a Mac, a targeted screen grab is Command Shift 4. I want to make sure to get all my notes and everything. So I did a screen grab of it. Next, I'm going to open that screen grab. in preview which is max program and then i just go up in the options that you can't see in the video but they're there on my screen to tools and i'm going to flip it horizontally so it's not a mirror image anymore now you can read my writing and i'm going to do tools and i'm going to do adjust color just like i i use to refine my finished png for assignment two and i'm going to do auto levels and that's why all these color correcting skills are helpful. 
no matter what kind of digital art you're doing. And I'm going to brighten up the shadows a little bit just so I can see it clearly. So I've established I've int by introducing my setting, I'm also introducing my character. And then the action that happens is that he gets cold, starts getting uh, frozen in solid ice, and then the sun starts to come out and then starts to thaw out. And there's still a little bit of solid ice there until we're set to reset, where even the puddles at his feet will evaporate off. So it gets back to the, the beginning. Now it's perfectly fine with me if your, your idea is really cartoony and silly. If it mixes photorealism with cartooning, that's fine. Uh, just think of Mary Poppins and Space Jam and those, uh, those bits of media where you combine animated characters in photorealistic settings. You can do the reverse. You can put a photorealistic character into an anim into a cartoony setting, whatever you want. It, the point is to have some fun with these GIF animations. And if you're looking for uh, professional examples, you know beyond the ones I show in the assignment sheet, I can recommend uh, old school pre-digital examples. And my favorite is the animator that worked with Monty Python. He's the only American in Monty Python. So Terry, Terry Gilliam is, is a film director. You know, he's made some of my favorite movies, like The Adventures of Baron von Munchausen. Um, and Time Bandits was, was one I grew up with and loved. But he started working for this comedy troupe, making little GIF animations, um, some which were used in the films like the, Holy, the, the Search for the Holy Grail or Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail. And these were just made with cutouts. So in uh, Google, you can search for a type and you can look for GIF animations. And so some of Terry Gilliam's animations do this project just beautifully. So you have a character and then you have a transformation that happens, right? And these were done with just paper cutouts and lots of photography in very much the same way we're going to be building these as raster images in Photopea and then timing out their playing through something like GIF Maker. But you're looking for a transformation. So it needs to be more than just a movement, right? So this is a very funny animation, but it doesn't show a transformation. Whereas this one does. Because his mouth opens, he actually changes the environment somehow. Let's see, some other good examples. So that's a transformation, right? You go from living creature to dead creature. And you can see how these could be told in nine frames pretty easily. And probably the most famous transformation animation that Monty Python uses is this foot coming down and just kind of stamping on things. That's a transformation. <laughs> I like this article. Is Terry Gilliam the father of the GIF? And Terry Gilliam would actually use a lot of found images just like we've been doing with compositing. So he would he would do cutouts from illuminated manuscripts or from paintings and use those. So that's a, a rabbit hole you guys can go down. Okay, so what are we looking for next class? We're looking for sketches to be posted. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch and uh, post mine. And that's where we'll, we'll start next class. If you want to look ahead a little bit, look at past student examples and look at some of the YouTube uh, tutorials for past semesters. And it will help you understand what's amb ambitious and what's more doable for your ideas.